All right. Praise God and welcome. Um, I, I just hope you'll take a few minutes with me tonight and tune in. I, I've been studying the Word of God a lot lately, and I've got a lot more time at home to do that. And so I've been praying and reading and listening, and I'm always excited to share with you because I believe what God puts in my heart to speak directly to me, to correct, to exhort, and push me in the right direction. He also wants to then use that for me to share it with you, to help you as well. So I know that I want to start with prayer tonight. There's a couple of people that now you have family members that uh, have either had the virus and they're recovering, or they thought they had it, but they didn't. And then there are some that actually are dealing with it right now and you have you have some extended family that you're concerned about and so we're going to pray for them and the scripture came to to me this evening as i was getting ready i hadn't planned on sharing it uh i know that uh bill billy taylor shared something yesterday i don't know if it was about isaiah 41 he was exhorting us to meditate on certain scriptures and uh this so i, I opened isaiah 41 and i began to read it it says, be silent before me, islands, and that's the exclamation point. Be silent before me, islands, God says, and let people renew their strength. Let them approach then, let them testify. Let them approach, then let them testify. Let us come together for the trial. We're in a trial in so many ways. And it, the, the enemy always wants to use trials to break us down and also to divide us. And we can't allow that to happen. We need to be steadfast before the Lord. Listen, if somebody says something that uh, you don't like or you don't agree with and it, it offends you, being offended is your choice. You don't have to be offended. You just have to say, well, I didn't care about that comment. I'll just move on. Jesus said, blessed is he who was not offended because of me. So and he was talking about himself because people were offended about Jesus and what he said. So listen, if people get offended at Jesus and what he said, there's no doubt we're going to get the opportunity to get offended by what other people say. But don't, don't accept that. See, that's a snare of the enemy to divide you and to divide us from the purposes of God. So let's pray tonight, and let's allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us through the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus, for the presence of the Lord. God, I bless you today that you are the living Savior, that there's no other God besides you. I thank you, Father, that you love me, and you love them with an everlasting love. Lord, that you look upon us and you delight in us, because of what Jesus has done in us, you look upon us and you see holiness and you see righteousness because Jesus is inside of us. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would help us to walk in the truth of who you are in us and what you've done in our life. God, I pray for every person tonight that is suffering with this virus. I pray in the name of Jesus that people would be healed, that this thing would be cleansed from our land. In the name of Jesus, touch those that we are concerned about because they're loved ones and friends that we know that are, ha that are dealing with this. And we pray, oh God, that you would breathe the breath of life. We rebuke the virus, we rebuke illness, and we pray for the Holy Ghost to come upon people. In the name of Jesus, protect every single worker that that is trying to help doctors, nurses, all of the people involved in caring for those. We pray for the strength of God upon them. Lord, I pray for us as the people of God. Help us to set a guard over our mouth. Help me and help us to set a guard over our mouth as we speak about our politicians and people making decisions. What we pray for them, Father, in the name of Jesus, is for the love of God, the wisdom of God, and the power of God to break through, and every demonic influence in their life to be cut off, and that each person, God, or whether, God, whether it's our 
governor or whether it's the president or a senator or each person would yield themselves to the wisdom of God so that you can minister to us. I pray that people would not take advantage of the situation for evil. I pray, oh God, against that. And we put blockades up in the name of Jesus Christ that evil could not advance. But rather, Father, where people are intending evil, it would be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ and your righteousness and your grace and strength would shine through like the morning sun. God, open up our hearts tonight. Open up our hearts to receive the word of God and be transformed in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Say amen if you're amen. watching me on the phones. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As you might have noticed, I haven't done videos this week. I put up a Bible study on our website yesterday, which is Jack's summitchurch.com jaxsummitchurch.com j-a-x summitchurch.com and there's a bible study up there and uh, I just wanted to take a break because I did two videos on Friday and then we did two on Sunday and I just wanted to take a little break from that and, and put together something else for you to have in your home and, and study if you know somebody that doesn't have internet and please make a copy of that uh, and take it to them because we do have some people that don't text and they don't have internet and uh, I don't want them to miss out on what God is saying and doing and one of the things that God spoke to me yesterday morning was the idea remember I, I showed you in the Bible study about the the story Jesus told about the sheep and the goats and he said the difference between the sheep and the goats is that what you did and didn't do uh, the sheep, you saw me, and you cared for me, and you loved me, and you helped me. And the goats, you saw me, you didn't help me. And they both said, when did we see you? And he said, as you did it to the least of the brethren, you did it unto me. As you did to those who are at the bottom of the food chain in life, you were doing it unto me. And those people that you neglected, they were the least, and you looked down on them and made light of them. You did that unto me. So the thought came to be is that one of the reasons we don't see God, we say, well, I've never seen God, This I do something, show up, speak to me, is because we miss the way that God comes. And one of the way that God comes to us is when you are doing the work of Christ and sharing the heart of Christ Jesus. When, when somebody takes the time to call you and just pray for you and bless you, Somebody takes the time to come over and, and get you groceries or fix something that you need fixed just because they love you and they care about you. Um, somebody is praying for you. This is, that's, that's an opportunity for you to see God showing up in your life. And God shows up when you're ministering through you. He shows up to the least of these or to whomever is in need. He shows up through you to them. And if you look upon them, of course, you're going to see God in them. That's why our babies and our children can so teach us so much about the Father and the love of God is because God has shined his light through them and through mankind. So, all right, I don't want to take too long to get where I really intend to go, and that's, that's what I put online, Genesis 35. So if you want to turn there, I started, I prayed, let us go through this trial together, Isaiah 41. Now I'm going to read from Genesis 35 here in just a minute. It's the story of Jacob. Now in Genesis 28, Jacob is fleeing from his brother Esau. He stole a blessing. He really did his brother terribly, terribly wrong. And then he deceived his father. His dad's laying there on a sick bed like he's dying. He can't hardly see or hear. You, you've got to be pretty low down to be tricking your own dad out of something when he can't hardly see or hear. And, and your mom helps you do it. That's terrible. So he fled because Esau was going to kill him. And he knew it, so he got out of Dodge. When it says fled, it literally, I love the Hebrew, it says bolt. He bolted like a lightning bolt comes from the sky. That, Jacob was out of there in a hurry to save his skin. So he made a place, when he finally made camp, he made a place, and in that night when he was sleeping, he had a dream and he saw angels on a ladder ascending, going up 
into heaven and descending. And then when he woke up, he said, the Bible says he was terrified of what he saw. And he says, this place is not nothing else than heaven's gate. This place he calls the house of God. And he, he put, built an altar there. He called it that. But he didn't want to stay there. He was terrified of it. And in fact, what he does is because he's still in that deceiver, trickster mode of Jacob trying to get something for himself. He actually tries to like make a deal with God. It's crazy. He says to God, the Almighty One who gave him this awesome dream, he says to God, he says, I'll tell you what, God, if you bless me um, and take care of me and bring me back to my home again, um, I'll make a deal with you, God. I'm going to make it sweet. I'll give you a tenth of everything you bless me with. Ooh, what a guy. So in other words, he's going to give the tithe, that means tenth, back to God, which already belongs to God. So I'm going to give you what belongs to you if you watch out for me, God. Can you see this deceiver nature that he's working with here? He thinks he's going to outsmart God. Hey, God, I'll tell you what, if you take care of me, I'll give you back something. Wink. What belongs to you, I'm going to give back to you. Wow, what a giver. What a generous person. So we see that he has an encounter and he says, wow, this is the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. I'm gonna, this is amazing. I, I'm going to just, I, God, I'm, gonna, I'm so happy about all this. I'm scared to death of what I saw, but yeah, yeah, I'll make a deal with you. I'm going to give you a tithe. So understand that when you, when you offer anything to God as, as a tithe, you know, you, you your time, your talent, your money, whatever God has blessed you with, that already belongs to God anyway. All you're doing is returning to him what he has put on loan to you as a steward in the kingdom of God. So to become generous, we actually have to go beyond that because he says, I want you to give back what belongs to me because it all belongs to me, but I'm going to call the first tenth holy, and then I'm going to give you 90%. And if you really want to see generosity work in your life and the, the river of God's blessing flow abundantly through you, go into the generosity part and say, okay, the 90% that you left me, Give, I give. So the other day I said, uh, if you get your stimulus check, pray about what you're going to give to it. Can you imagine if everybody just gave tithe off their stimulus check just here in the church? So I don't know, let's just say 50 people, let's say 100 people get this stimulus check and each one of them gave their tithe. Whatever 50 or 75 or 100 times 120 is would go in to the work of the kingdom of God. So pray and honor the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So, moving along here, he has a dream, he sees it, tries to make a deal with God. Now, years go by, and Jacob has returned to his homeland, and great things have happened. God has increased him. He's had the encounter with God, you know, where he's Israel. And in Genesis 35, he's going to um, go back to Bethel. Now, his whole life, he stayed away from Bethel house of God. That's what Bethel means. He stayed away from it. It terrified him. I built an altar there. Thank you, God, but I'm not going back there. So he was about 10 miles away, and they ran into some real difficulties in Genesis 34, and after that, Jacob's like, well, now we got to get out of here, guys. Thanks a lot. You brought trouble on my head. We got to get out of here. So in chapter 35 of verse 1, um, God said to Jacob, arise, Go to Bethel and dwell there. Arise, go to Bethel and dwell there. Make an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you and purify yourself and change your garments. Then let us arise and go to Bethel, to the house of God. So before we go there, he says... Put away your foreign gods. Before we go to the house of God, get rid of your idols. Purify yourself and put on different clothing. Get ready. We're going up to the house of God. So that I may make there an altar to the God who answers me in the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave to Jacob all their foreign gods, all their idols. Isn't that weird? That Jacob would have all these sons who have all these idols. It came from Rachel. 
and Jacob never cleansed it, never got it out of his house. So they gave all the foreign gods that they had and the rings that were in their ear, earrings, many of them fashioned into little images of these foreign gods. They take them out and Jacob, the Bible says, hid them there under the terebinth tree that was near Shechem. And the word hid means buried. They buried their idols there. And I wanted to say another thing when it says, I want you to go to Bethel and dwell there. It dwell means I want you to abide. Literally, it means marry. I want you to marry. I want you to abide in that place because uh, that's where I want you, near my presence. Remember, he was scared of it. Heaven's gates, God's out, man, I don't want to be there. And God says, I want you to go there, and I want you to abide. I want you to marry that place. I want you to stay there. So what did we start out weeks ago when we entered into this horrible virus season? Uh, we said, Psalm 91, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Dwelling in the secret place. The secret place is Jesus. And so, Jacob, I want you to go there where you stayed away from. Where you go there, get rid of all your stinking idols. Now, the reason I said it came from Rachel is because when he fled Laban's house years earlier with his family, um, Rachel stole an idol from Jacob's house, or I mean Laban's house, her dad. And she took it with, with her, and then when Laban came looking for it, she still hid it and concealed it. She loved that false god. And then that false god and all the stuff that it entails begins to obviously infiltrate her entire family because now they all, I wonder how big of a heap of false idols they brought to bury. I want you to just keep your mind on that. Okay, they get rid of their idols, and they're going to dwell in the house of the Lord. Now I want to share with you another thing from John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 47. Notice, God says to Jacob, you're going to stay. You're not strolling by, not a drive-by to the house of God. You're going there to stay. All right. Now Jesus... In John chapter 1, verse 47, Jesus saw, he's calling the disciples, Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said, Behold an Israelite in whom indeed there is no guile or deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, you were under the fig tree, and you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel, because of one word of knowledge or that God Jesus saw him and he said wow you are the son of God Jesus answered him because I said I saw you under the fig tree you believe he says you're going to see greater things than these and he said to him truly truly I say to you you will see the heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man on Jesus who is Jesus Jesus is the way no man goes to the Father, but by me, Jesus said. I am the way. So go back. Jacob sees angels ascending and descending. Now, what's the house of God today? You are. I am. The Holy Spirit says you're my temple. And so now Jesus is in your life. And wherever Jesus is, I don't think it's a stretch at all. Wherever Jesus is, he says, Nathaniel, it's an open heaven because I'm the son of God. And you're going to see greater things than just a word of knowledge. This is going to be awesome. You're going to see angels ascending and descending. Because where Jesus goes, he carries the presence of God. And where the presence of God is, it's an open heaven. And where it's an open heaven, great and mighty things can flow into our life. Hallelujah! That's why we can pray in confidence for miracles. That's why we can speak in confidence about the inheritance in Christ Jesus that we have and the love of the Father because we are living under an open heaven because Jesus is inside of us. But, saints of God, that only happens as you learn to abide in the secret place. There was a statistic um, study, forget which research group it was, just recently, within the last couple of years, that showed that like about 50% of the people who go to church just go. They're not really encountering God. 
or yielding their life. And what happens on Sunday or happens when they go to church has little to no impact on the way they live their everyday life. That's pretty sad, isn't it? But it's the reality of where we're living today. So Jesus has come to us during this time and what he wants to say to us is the same thing he says to Jacob. I'm talking about this quarantine time, the time where everything is, that has been normal is shut down to large degrees. He's saying to you, I want you to come to Bethel. I want you, whoever you are individually watching this video, I want you to come and to the church corporately, to the house of God, the presence of God, and abide there. I want you, fill in the name, I want Jim, I want Graham, I want Amy, I want Paul, I want Joe, I want you to come to the house of God and abide. I want you, Jim, to put away your idols, and I don't want you just to set them like Rachel, she hid them so she could look at them later. No, I want you to bury them. What are your idols? Well, we have made, in America, we've made sports an idol. We have made money an idol. We've made sex an idol. And we've made self an idol. A lot of things we do are motivated uh, self-preservation and what's in it for me. In other words, we're like Jacob. I, I'll serve you, God, and I'll give you everything you... If you do this, God, I'll, I'll do that. And, and Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come to me, take my yoke upon you, for my burden is easy and it is light. So... The yoke signifies that we're, we're getting like two oxen, that's the reference in the Bible, that we're yoked up with Jesus. And then Paul says, if you are born of the Spirit, let us also live in the Spirit. So I can be born of the Spirit and not walk or live, not be yoked up with the Holy Spirit? Yes. You can ignore the voice of God and the Holy Ghost, just like I started talking about. When people come and they do things for us in the name of Jesus, we turn around and say, yes, but the person I really like didn't show up and the pastor didn't show up. And so we miss God showing up in the face of the one that is knocking on our door and giving us life and strength and love. So we can... That's what we've done. We've, we've said, yes, Lord, save me, and I'll serve you as long as you do. And what he says is, all I want you to do is surrender. Surrender to the place of abiding. Surrender to the place where I can be your Lord and God. And so he brings us to this place, and we're weeks into this now. Weeks. We've done, I think, three weeks of services on Sunday without anybody here besides the three of us, essentially. Now, last week, Rachel and the baby were with Graham, but essentially me, Graham, and Wesley have been here. He's been doing music and singing, and I've been preaching. Three weeks. And before that, we'd split our service up into two different services so that we would be under 50 people. And even through this time, some of you have not taken the time to say, Lord, what do I need to change in my life? What idols do I need to let go of? I know that people say, well, I have made sports an idol. You realize that when I talk about giving $1,000 to the kingdom work of God, people get mad. But they don't bat an eye about paying $1,000 for a mortgage or a hunting camp or several hundred dollars for a car or a piece of a sports franchise. Sports franchise betting. Yeah. No big deal. Hey, Pastor, hey! No. 
See, God says that stuff's become an idol to you. We'll plunk down money for all kinds of stuff that we want. And we know that there are needs in the world. Missionaries that need our support and things that we can do for the kingdom of God, but we, we, don't, we don't do them. So this is what I'm talking about tonight. Letting the idols go because the place that God wants you to abide is so much better. I like watching golf on TV. I like watching football on TV. I pay money to go see sports games. But I'm telling you, taking time to be in the presence of God and pursue the heart of God is better than any of my idols. You're one of the biggest parts of satisfaction in life is having a vibrant faith. Did you know that having things is not even in the top of the list at all? Having possessions. But instead, people need a vibrant faith. They need healthy marriage and healthy family relationships, and they need a mission and a purpose. But having two cars, two homes, a doctorate versus a bachelor's, or I need at least a master's, and those, are, those things don't satisfy. They might provide openings for different opportunities in life, but for far too long, we've made our opportunities into idols. We don't teach our kids about being missionaries, and laying down all and following Christ. And that's what God wants to bring us back to, is he wants to bring Bethel, the house of God, into your life and into your home. So we can sit back and we can curse, which means not swear words, but to make light of, all that is going on, and say, I just want it to go back to normal. I do. I want to be able to go to a restaurant and go to a movie and play golf. I like those things. But what God wants is what is preeminent in my life. So as long as this thing goes, I need to press into the kingdom of God, and so do you. You need to model Christ Jesus or your children. Teach them how to pray at this time. Bring the word of God into your life. What are the idols that you need to get rid of to bring Jesus back to the center of your life? Because there can only be one center. God, help us to find that place. I'm going to close up here in a minute. But uh, do you guys that are watching, do you remember how God visited us here, right here, uh, on a Sunday morning in November when we had the Let It Rain conference and we had uh, Mike, Mike Arp was with us and God moved through him mightily and moved upon many that had been seeking the Lord for this time. There are many promises that God gave us, many prophecies, many great things done. There was a fire created in our heart. But like we so often do, we like it when God drives by. We like it when God shows up. We say, man, that was awesome. That was so good. But we quickly return to the idols. And then we say, well, if God wants to do it and he shows up and does that, then I will serve him. I mean, I'll give all. God said, people, children of God, I don't want this to be a drive-by relationship with you. I want to fill my life with your glory so that the angels of God and the blessings of God and the power of the Holy Spirit and the person of the Spirit can flow through your life so that you can reach many people. But do you know, when God moves... So often we thank him, we praise him, 
and then we move on and we blame it on something else, but not me. I'm, I'm not the one who plopped down and watched three hours of TV and instead of praying. And I, I'm not, I, I, well, that's, I'm just, Pastor, I'm tired. You're just being me. I'm trying to tell you that God is trying to bring you to that place where you would fast and pray and seek his face daily until it becomes part of your life that is more important than anything else. But you know what we do when people get like that? When people are fasting, they're praying, and they're weeping, and, and all they want to talk about is Jesus, and all they want to talk about is God, and they want to give their money away, and they want to do, we say, oh, those people are fanatics. And we even say to our kids, you don't want to, you don't want to be like that. We use a phrase, I've heard it all my life, we say, well, those people are so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Leonard Ravenhill wrote in the book, Why Revival Tarries, and he said, that's never been the problem. He said, the problem is we're so earthly minded that we're no heavenly good. And when someone is on fire for the Lord, they're an aberration, they're an outlier, and we don't want to be like them. And Jesus said, I want you to be like the worshiper Mary who spills out all that she has at the feet of Jesus in worship. And if you want to know what I'm going to preach about on Sunday, you can start studying Mary's life. And you'll see three times Mary's mentioned. This Mary that anointed Jesus' feet. Not mother of Christ Mary, but Mary Lazarus' sister. Three times she's mentioned in the Gospels. And every time she's mentioned, you know where she's at. She's at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus said, I love that. And we say, well, that, that, yeah, 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 but you know, you don't want to be that way. But Jesus says, no, that's exactly how I want you to be. I want you to be at my feet, worshiping me so that nothing else matters if you don't come into my presence and abide with me and live out of my presence. We are people of presence. If we don't dwell in the presence of God, then we can't see the revival of thousands of souls coming. And we can't be people that God wants us to. Would you pray with me? Father, I pray that each one of us would say, oh Lord, search my heart. I want to lay all of my idols at your feet and I want to bury them. I feel the presence of God so strong right now and I pray that you receive that at your house. If you need to pick up your phone and go in the bedroom and be by yourself so that you can effectively pray, then do it. Don't sit there and say, well, I'll do it later. No, move when God is moving. In the name of Jesus, we lay our idols down and then we ask you, Lord, to reveal to us what exactly they are so that we can turn loose of them. God, I pray that we would not raise a carnal generation, not another carnal generation that knows how to work hard and knows how to go to church, but doesn't know how to come into the presence of God and be yielded to the Spirit of God every day. Let us give this to our children a fire of the Holy Ghost. I thank you that you love us. And because you love us, you correct us. So Lord, we look and now we ask you to help us to see the love of God in what we're in right now. So that we can understand anytime, Lord, you interrupt our life 
It's to give us a course readjustment and get us at your feet so that we would worship you with all that is within us. Blessed and holy is the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, I encourage you again to share this. Make a copy of the link and text it to people that you know need to hear this. You say, oh man, you need to hear what God said tonight. And share it with them. If they're not watching and they're in this church, share it with them in particular. Because every leader in this church, every person, regardless of your age, you need to hear what I've shared tonight. But you don't just need to hear it only. You need to do it. And I need to do it. And if you want to see God show up through this trial, then this is what God is calling us to at this time. And I pray that you would hear that from me as somebody who's an under-shepherd of Jesus. He's the chief shepherd, but my responsibility is to speak to you the truth and the revelation of God. And I pray that you hear it, because if you apply it, it'll make all the difference in the world in the now and in the days to come. I love you. God bless you. And we'll see you soon.